you know, verse 7 of um, Genesis chapter 2 says this. The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils of life. And the man became a living being. You know, the Bible begins with explanations. It's there to, to try to help people understand how we got here. You know, Genesis chapter 1. It's, it's lovely. It's like a poem. But Genesis chapter 2, you know, gives us a, a different perspective on, on the same creation. The creating of everything. And it's like a narrative. It's, um, it's a story, isn't it? It's the kind of thing that was told for generation after generation after generation. And something that I hope that we will continue to tell our children and tell our grandchildren and that they will tell their children and grandchildren. You know, in, ex in Genesis chapter 2, the, the explanation is, is that God, he, he, he took the dirt, he took ground, he took gr dry ground, uh, and in the in the Hebrew language, the word is Adama. And God breathed into it. And between the ground and the breath of life that God breathes into it, well, out came a man, Adam. The first man's name is Adam. So God took the Adama and he made an Adam. You know, as, as you work through the Old Testament and those ancient writing, writings of the Bible, you keep coming back to this like paradox that exists at the heart of to what is central to what it means to be a human being. And that is the breath of God. Job, he talks about we come from dust. Ecclesiastes. Solomon's Ecclesiastes says that we come from, from dust. The Psalms, well, lots of Psalms have been written, haven't they? Psalms basically say that God remembers that we are from dust. From dust we came and to dust that we return. And he comes up time and time again. Ground, dust, brevity, our fragile our fragility, our fragile nature. Like, for instance, in Psalm 39, verse 5. Let me just read this to you. You you have made my days a mere hand's breath. The width of a hand. The width of a hand. You know, we hear just for a minute, you know, that the span of our years is nothing before God. Everyone is just a breath. Even those who seem secure... The writer says, take the person who, who appears more secure and they are just dust that's been breathed into. There is this fragile nature, isn't it, to being a human being? You know, things happen. Do you know, we, we behave in a manner that quite often isn't something to be proud of at all. I want to tell you this story about this guy who um, he stopped at a red traffic light. Okay, so he pulls up this traffic light. He's in a queue of traffic. Now the lady who was in the car in front of him, she decided to use this opportunity of stopping to have a little look over at her, at her papers on her passenger seat. She's flicking through it and she doesn't realise that the traffic light has turned to green. And she didn't obey this command, this green, you know, you've got red, amber, green. Well, the green is a command for us to go. Like red is the command for us to stop. It's not a suggestion, is it? Well, the green light came on. She was busy doing something else, looking at all these papers and sorting out all of these papers. And she didn't move. And the traffic light went back to red. Well, this guy behind her, now, he's got his windows wound up, okay? But he, he's going mad. He's shouting and he's screaming and he's banging the steering wheel. He's like a man possessed, you know, shouting, you stupid woman, why didn't you move? 
his car's shaking like back and forth because he's just so mad and his expressions of complete distress were actually interrupted by a policeman who knocked on his window tapped on the window of the car the guy turned what he says what are you what are you doing policeman was looking at him. The guy says to the policeman, you can't arrest me because I'm shouting in my own car. But the policeman said, could you just step out please and come into the back of my vehicle. Well the guy, he, he does that, he, he goes into the back of his car and he sat in the back of the car and he is ranting and he's raging, he's basically going crazy about this woman who, who had completely disregard from the law, didn't respect the people behind her, who were in a rush to go to work, and that now the policeman was holding him up as well. But the policeman calmly just asked for his driving license detail, he radioed in, he checked his license, he, uh, he checked the registration of the car, who it belonged to, he checked that the car had insurance. And the officer then advised the guy, everything's in order, sir, you can now go. Well, this chap says, look, I knew you couldn't arrest me for what I was yelling and shouting in my own car. You haven't heard the last of this. And he gets out of the car. But the officer then replies to him and says, look, before you go, I didn't arrest you for shouting in your car. He said, because I was parked directly behind you. And I saw you screaming and shouting and beating your steering wheel and going crazy and I thought to myself oh what an idiot but there's nothing I can do for him throwing a fit in his own car but then the policeman goes on and says I noticed this the cross hanging in your rear screen mirror and then I saw that fish sign on your boot of your car and then I saw this Choose Life sticker in the back of your windscreen. I saw this Jesus Loves You sticker on your bumper. And I thought, Do you know what? This guy must have stolen that car. Do you know, we don't always give a good impression to people as Christian people, do we? Have you ever had that moment in where you were like frozen? You, you, you realise that what you've done or what you're about to do is not conducive to you as a Christian. And then you begin to have this conversation to yourself about <laughs> what's the purpose of losing your rag like that or that particular gesture that you made. The thing is, my friends, is that we have this sense. We're all fragile people. We, we, we cave in so f fast to our human nature. You know, we, we can talk so well, I can talk so well about it, you know, until we're in a, a slightly stressful situation and then we're below. There's this fragile, this, this, this fragility, fragile dimension to our existence. You know, in the Psalms, Psalm chapter 8, verse 3, it says this, when I consider your heavens, we're talking to the Lord now, Psalm chapter 8, verse 3. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have set in place, what are mere mortals that you are mindful of them? Or human beings that you care for them? You know, I feel that the writer is essentially saying, how can you be that big and fast and mighty a mighty God, and yet be so close to me, this fragile human being, be near me, be intimate with me. And then it goes on, it says in verse 5 of the same psalm, Psalm chapter 8, it says, You have made them, referring to human beings, a little lower, a little lower than the heavenly beings, and you've crowned them with glory and honour. You've made them rulers over the works of your hands, and you've put everything under their feet. You know, there's this tension to being a human being because we are so fragile and frail and we crumble so easily. And yet, we've been breathed into by the same 
almighty being that made the whole universe. There's a greatness. There's this life source where there is power and strength and vitality that rests inside each and every one of us. You know, we might be fragile, and yet we are filled with the potential for glory and honour in the eyes of God. Those writers who told the story in the Old Testament, Genesis, etc., you know, who probed just how we are made and how we are wired, they, they wanted to tell us that the breath of God is still being breathed into us and that this breath of God, it, it is the Spirit of God, made in His Spirit. His breath, His Spirit is all around us and we can continue to be breathing it in today, my friends. Psalm 104 verse 30 says, when you send your spirit, they are created. You know, I often think about this because central to Christian tradition for thousands of years has been the disciplines of meditation, reflection, silence, and breathing. It was understood to be that if you was to be a healthy person and, and to be fully connected to God, you would need to spend significant parts of your days breathing in silence and meditating and praying and allowing the Spirit of God to transform you and to touch you. Now, from way back when, our ancestors, they, they knew and understood that there was something divine about this. There's something sacred and, and holy about this this act of meditation and breathing you know breathing in particular when you're born you take a first breath because it, when we take our last breath we die you know we need this breath and in the same way the ancient writers of scripture came to understand that God would actually dwell inside, inside us, inside of people. They believed that the God who made everything actually lived and dwelled in his people. You know, later writers would begin to refer that we were his temples and we were temples. And in the midst of the gathering would be the temple of God, meaning that God lives and dwells in our mortal bodies, in the midst of his peoples. You know, one writer put it like this, if the spirit, the breath of him, who, who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit that lives in you. I wonder what our response is to this. Maybe we can say, God, if you can raise somebody from the dead, if you can set all the stars in place with your fingers, could you help me out with what concerns me today? My friends, I invite you this morning to invite God to breathe his spirit into you. Now, again, I'll do those things that concern you today in particular do it now. From the very beginning of time, breath, the, the breath that every one of us takes all the time, has been a single physical reminder of God. We are loved by God. The scriptures say that God gives his spirit without limit. Well, maybe we need to give more of our time, of our God-given time, to him to breathing in the Spirit of God. You know, if you need guidance, well, God says, I'm going to give that to you. You need wisdom, God says, I'm going to give that to you as well. You need courage, God says, I'll give it to you. You need more strength, God says, I'll give that to you. And God gets really mad at the fact and bold about all these things and all these promises. You need perseverance, he says, I'm going to give you perseverance. 
I'll give you things to persevere for. You need truth. Well, I'm going to give you truth, guidance, direction, wisdom, truth, learning, knowledge, ordered out of chaos, clarity and confusion. God says that he will give you all of those things. And for most of us, my friends, we just need to be spending more time meditating on who God is, breathing in his spirit. The book of uh, Thessalonians, the second book, we've just read it, chapter 2, verse 13, says that we would be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Now, that word sanctifying is a, is a huge word. It's a it's massive word, isn't it? Okay? It means cleaning. It means purifying. It's like the house cleaning that God's Holy Spirit wants to do. And what the Spirit does is that the Spirit allows us to see the rubbish in our lives. It allows us to do that. The sin that we have, the brokenness, the Spirit makes us aware of the things that need to go out of our life, just to be gone from our lives. The things that we need to pass on, pass away, the waste that we've got to get rid of from our lives, the things that need to be eliminated, the Spirit makes us aware of those things if we spend enough time in the Spirit to do it. To allow the Spirit to clean us up. There are things, all of us have things to get rid of. You know, what are you worried about? What, what, what has confused you? What has like turned you around in your feelings about who God is at the moment? Have you got any hate? Any anger, any any lust, envy, greed? Do you covet things? You know, oh, if only I had that, my life would be better. That's covet, covet in need, covetous nature. Please allow the Spirit of God to deal with those things and everything else. Do you know? Do you carry around other people's problems? I know people who do. Someone once said to me, do you know, Ian, because I've carried around other people's problems, they've said to me, Ian, you're not the flight attendant of the world. God did not make you carry those things around, whatever they are. God did not make you have to cope with those things and to live with those things you know central to christian tradition for thousands of years my friends as i said earlier on has been reflection and meditation but we seem to have forgotten about that today there has previously been awareness about these things that if we don't stop on a regular basis and ask questions about the stuff that we carry around with us and we don't get rid of it our lives just end up being a mess so when was the last time that you took some quality time to sit down, to contemplate, to breathe in God's Spirit? When was the last time that you turned off your mobile phone, turned your television off completely, put your computer, your laptop off to sleep, your tablets, turn them off and spend time with just you and him you know maybe today i don't know maybe you're just being you're just filled with despair maybe maybe someone listening this morning is is saying god you know i'm listening to your word now i'm listening to you, and i know your holy spirit is showing me now that i've been cheating i've been lying i've been pretending to be someone that i'm not and I need you this morning. I need your spirit to be breathed into me to come and clean me up and get to get rid of those things. God, I need courage. Maybe, my friends, your heart has been broken for some, some, something that have happened. We should be saying to the Lord, Lord, God, would you heal me with a, from my broken heart? God, we need you. To breathe into us hope and truth and love and courage. Do you agree? God, we need you to breathe into us hope and truth 
and love and courage. If you agree with me, just say Amen now. Amen. And we pray. We say, Lord God, we need you to be with us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us today. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Just use these next few moments to pray that prayer as we listen to this music. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew.